Okay, here we are on Sunday, December 12th, which is Advent of Code 2021, day number 12. I expected a long one because it's the weekend yesterday and we didn't really get a long one. Maybe we'll get a long one today. Uh, we'll watch out for that. We can see that our little cave is circling around back, getting back towards the, the ocean here. Maybe we'll find our keys. Of course, our keys are down here. We know that, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, if you don't know what the heck is going on here, read the YouTube video description. Uh, I added chapters to all the videos I've uploaded so far now, so you can skip around and go to part one, part two, uh, etc. So yeah, look for the description under this video, and you can skip over all the instructions and parts uh, if you want, and go right to where you need in case the video is really long. That might be really useful. That's all I got to say right now. Let's go part 12. Passage pathing with your submarines, subterranean subsystems, subsisting suboptimally. The only way you're getting out of this cave anytime soon, find a path. Up, oh, we gotta do some pathfinding. We're gonna have to look up some A star, maybe. Uh, the only way to know if you found the best path is to find all of them. The sensors are still mostly working, and so you build a rough map of the remaining caves, your puzzle input. A to C, A to B, B to D, A to end, B to end. Well, if A goes right to the end, then we can just ignore C, B, and D and just go, I don't understand how to read this exactly. Um, oh, no, it was, I was correct. The start, so start is one of the locations, yeah. And end is one of the locations. And so you can go start A, end, start B, end. There's also C and D, but those are, are dead ends, okay. A list of all the caves are connected. You can start in the cave named Start and your destination in the cave named End. An entry like BD means that the cave B is connected to cave D. That is, you can move between them. And the above cave system looks roughly like this. So this is just a, I don't think it's a diagram. It's not a digraph, which is a directed graph. I think it's a, um, right, because you could, you know, B, A, or you could go A, B. The directions don't matter. It's just a graph graph. Um, okay, you can move between them. The above system looks roughly like this. Your goal is to find the number of distinct paths that start at start and end at end. The number of paths that start at start and end at end. Well, there's start A, end, start B, end, but there's also start A, B, end, start B, A, end, right? Is there, is, can I go start A, C, A, end? Does that count as one of the? Ah, oh, there are 10 paths through the example. Look at that. Yeah. You can go start A, C, A, end. You're allowed to reuse nodes on the graph. Look. Um, but in that case, wouldn't there be infinity? Because you could go start A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, end, right? <laughs> there are, how are there only 10 paths? Um, We'll figure that out, I guess. Uh, don't visit, okay. Uh, and at end, don't visit small caves more than once. There are two types of caves, big caves like A and small, this, this is what makes the answer. Small caves like B. Be a waste of time to visit any small cave more than once, but big caves are big enough, it might be worth visiting them multiple times. So all paths you find, should visit small caves at most once and big caves any number of times. Okay, so yeah, you can go start A, B, A, C, A, end, right? Because you can get lots of A's going on. But once you go start A, B, that's it. You're done. B is out, right? B is out of the graph. Get out of here. Right? Once you leave a small cave, that's it. You sever connections with that one. Okay. There are 10 paths through the example cave system. Okay, so, um, yep, give it, give, yeah, lots and lots of A's, but B, C can only appear once. Each line in the above list corresponds to a single path. The caves visited by that path are listed in the order they are visited, separated by commas. Cave D is never visited by any path. Right, because in order to visit D, you'd have to go B, D, 
eh, right? As soon as you go to D, that's it. You're you're toast. Um, so yeah, you're never gonna visit D and and reach the end, right? Uh, okay. In this cave system, cave D is never visited. Cave B will be right? one way to find to cave D and a second time return since cave B is small is not allowed. Here is a slightly larger example. Okay. Oh, HN. So DC is the name of a cave. I see. Yep. D so a cave doesn't always have to be one letter, but it's either going to be uppercase letters or lowercase letters. So HN is a big cave. KJ is a small cave. There are 19 paths. Right? Even larger example has 226 paths. Uh, this one. So, so we got we got lots of test inputs here today, uh, which I think we're gonna need. How many paths through this cave system are there that visit small caves at most once? Puzzle input. Oh, it's not a it's not a big one. Okay, is the the end connects to double A. And H A, okay. To begin, get your puzzle input. Okay, so let's before we even start with this, uh, there must be a Python graph library of some kind. Plotly, no, not that kind. Not that kind of graph. The graph data structure. Implementing graphs in Python. What, right? Uh, one way to do it is you could do, yeah, you could do the dictionary way, right? This is the name of the node, and that's where at, those are the places it's connected to. That's one way. And then find a path, graph start end. Hmm. Okay, that's one way to do it, sure. Find all paths. <clears throat> Sorry, because end. Return it, pass for node and graph start. If not, if node not in the path, yep, this is recursively finding all the paths. That's one way to do it. Yep. Find the shortest path. Okay. We're not looking for the shortest path. We're looking for find all paths. All right, we can start by recursively finding all paths using the dictionary method. That's not a bad idea. Um, Let's look up if there's another, another any other ideas. Uh, graphs, types of graphs. There we go. Undirected graph. That's what we want. Well, I know what the difference is. No, the, right. This you can go any direction. Um, okay. Weighted graph. It's not a weighted graph. Uh, well, it's sort of a weighted graph, but the weights are not on the connections, right? It's that there's two types of nodes. Uh, can it be? Can we represent this as a tree? I don't think we can represent it as a tree because you know, let's say obviously in this in this example, right, four would have to be a, a big a big one, right? Otherwise, there's no going through. If, say the start is at the top and the end is at the bottom. Uh, well, I guess you could, if, if four was a small one, you'd be forced to just go straight through. Four, five, six would be your only ending option. Um, and you could, you know, if start connects to one, two, and three, well, you could go three different paths. Uh, but if um, four is a, a big one, you could be like two, four, three, four, right? Five, six, um, like that. But, you know, it's if it's, the point is, if we use a tree, right? Trees only go in one direction from the top to the bottom, whereas you know here you might be going like <clears throat> one, four, two, four, and that's not a tree anymore. So it's it's not a tree; it's a graph. Uh, so we've got yeah adjacency matrix. Okay. All right, let's go with the uh, let's go with the old, you know dictionary and um, the dictionary recursion method. The problem is here, um, let's 
we have to eliminate paths that hit small nodes twice. So I think what we have to do is we have to say, okay, we can either find all paths using, um, here we go. We can find all paths and then filter out the ones that have small nodes twice. And that might be fast enough for part one, but I'm guessing that will not be fast enough for part two because finding all paths will be just way too many paths, right? I think what we need to do is as we're finding all paths, when we look at any individual path, right? We it's as it's pathing around, as soon as it hits a small node for the second time, we need to be like, all right, forget that. Don't, right? Stop, cut it off earlier. And that might be fast enough still. Uh, okay. But yeah, we'll go with this. Uh, all right. So our first task is going to be to parse the input and generate a uh, dictionary based uh, graph. Okay, let's do that. Okay, cool. Uh, let's make number 12. Oops. We're gonna have a lot of test inputs here today. So we got um, test input one. Oh, those are the paths. Is test input two? Oop. And then we got test input three. Now here's the real input. No. Okay. And we'll keep this guy here. Great. Copy our template over. And we are passage pathing. All right, so let's, uh, oops. So we have to parse this into the dictionary. So I think what we do is we say, all right, look, um, take a line, right? And um, should we maybe make a class instead of the, The dictionary. Mm. Yeah, let's uh, let's make a, a class like around the dictionary, right? Because then we can make like an add an add node function and then call that repeatedly on the parsed the parsed input. Let's do that. Uh, okay. So for the parsed input, I just want to get to just for each line, split on the hyphen and get the two parts and make a list of those. And then we can send that to our into our, our graph class. Um, so parsed input for line, pend line dot split on the hyphen, right? Uh, Okay, and let's uh, okay, and let's see. We got a problem here. No such file or directory. Oh, I see what happened. All of these are not in the direct. There we go. 
Yep, start A, start B, A, C, A, B, B, D, D, A, N. Okay, good, it worked. So we got our parsed input. Let's do a uh, class, uh, call it just graph, a uh, cave graph. Cave graph. Um, and so it's gonna be, uh, it's, it's gonna be the list of uh, links, right? Or what do you what do you call it in graph terminology? Paths. Um, well, a path is a whole path. A node is a single node. What is a link between two nodes called officially? And and you know, just call it a link, I guess. Saying the nodes are connected by a direct arc for each key or connections, right? Um, we'll call it connections. Eh, links, links is fine. Okay, so um, so, so self dot graph is a dictionary, and then we're gonna have um, oops. Says build graph. Right. I can just do this. I just like to I you know, I could just do all this in the init, but I just like to keep the init itself kinda, you know just calling things and only thing I like to do in init is either call a, another function or you know set uh, a variable right like that directly I don't like to do any logic in the init because then it becomes sort of a, a mess it's much cleaner like if you have to do logic in the init just bust it out into a to a private function deal okay so uh, for link oh, self that graph is nothing for a link in links, we are going to uh, self dot uh, add uh, link right. Oops. Add link. And then we're going to say, okay, well, there's two halves to the link, right? There's the, the, the node, node A and node B, right? It gets split up. Um, we're going to use set default, which I have to look up every time. Set default which is where you say, okay, you have the key, set default age to none, right? So yeah, if they don't have an age, right, you set it to this, but if they do have an age, don't touch it, right? So I just, I'm gonna do an example of this just down here so I can illustrate. So, uh, okay. So let's say you have a dictionary. Right, and if you wanted to go in the dictionary and be like, "All right, let's set um, a a a to one," right? Okay, we set a to one. Terrific. Uh, now, what we do is we're like, "All right, well, I don't know." Right, I'm writing new code. I don't know what's in the dictionary right now, and I want there to be a key a in the dictionary. But if there's already a key A in the dictionary, I don't want to overwrite the one that it has there, right? It might, I don't want to mess that up. But I know that if there isn't an A in the dictionary, I want it to be a two. So I can do d.set default A to two, right? And you'll notice that it's like, no, A has a one, right? <laughs> but if I were to set a B like this, it's like, okay. Right, so it's a way to write to the dictionary without overwriting the data that's already there. Uh, and so, what we can do here is we can say, "Hey, look, right, uh, self.graph.setDefault, dot graph dot set default 
right? Um, node A to an empty list and node B to an empty list. Um, therefore, right, we don't know if node A might already be on our graph or node B might already be in our graph. Um, actually, we can do this, node B, node, right? If the, we don't want, actually, we don't want to do that. <laughs> um, we can actually do a set here because it's unique. Um, I wonder if that'll help us. Who knows? Anyway, uh, the point is that if the um, if node A is already in the graph, we're not going to erase it. <laughs> but if node A isn't in the graph, it's the first time we've seen a connection to node A, we will put it in the in the graph, right? Empty. And now that we know that for sure node A and node B are in the graph, at this point, we can say, okay, node A, right? We can add node B, B, A, just like that, okay? Um, <laughs> uh, if I, the thing is I'm keep, still keeping the nodes as a, as like a, you know, not the, the big small thing, um, I, I got to do some sort of determination on the the capital letterness of it. Um, uh, Python check if string is all caps. How to check string is upper, lower, or middle case? I've never had to check. I've only just you know set. Oh, is lower is upper? How nice. We can just use that. So we actually, we don't, we don't need to build anything because I've never had to use that in my whole life. I've always just used, I've set things to upper or lower. I've never had to check them <laughs> that I can remember at least. Okay. So now at the end of this, we should have the, the graph created. Uh, and now we can go to the find all paths here. Do a little copy paste. Why shouldn't I copy paste? Okay, so path equals where you've been already, right? So it's like if you're just starting out, this is a recursive function, right? So if you're just starting, um, and the thing is, right, then your path, you don't have a path yet. Um, but if you have already, if you've recursed a few times, you're deep into the into the recursion. Uh, do this. If you're deep into the recursion, right, then you're effectively saying, was there a picture of a graph? Oh, we'll just go to the one here, right? So you're like, okay, um, find a path from start to end. All right, well, okay, well, I'll go to A. All right, well, now recurse, find a path from A to end, right, and so on. Uh, okay, so. Uh, if the start equals the end, then, right, we, we've hit the end. That's a, that's a path, right? We're good. Uh, if there is the, I guess we don't really need this, but if the graph does not have the start you're asking for, then just, there is no path, right? Because you, you know, um, okay, so then... Okay, so we're going to collect all possible paths, right? So for node in self.graph start, right? So this is basically saying, hey, 
for each spot that's connected to the start, if the node is not in the path already, right? Find all paths, self.graph, node, and well, we don't need this. Node end path, right? So it's instead of finding, so we start at the first time you call this, start is going to equal to start, right? But then the next time you call it, right, it's like, okay, we'll find a path from like A to the end, right? The end never changes. Um, and send in the path you've already got. So then for each new path, add it here. So all we need to do now is add to this. Um, let's just clean these problems up. They're bothering me. Has key is deprecated. Use in. If start in. There you go. Okay. Good. Um, so they're saying, hey, if the node is not in the path already. So this one here is basically saying like, hey, you know, only use a node once ever, right? This implementation. So we need to change that and say, hey, um, if the node is um, not in the path, right? We just need to change this conditional to allow usage of uppercase nodes, right? So we want to allow, so this is only allowing usage of nodes that have not been visited, which is fine. So if node is not in the path, then we can use it. Or node.is upper. So if the node is not in the path, meaning we've used it already, or we obviously can't reuse the start and the end, and they're lowercase anyway, which I think was intentional, right? You can see that they've intentionally made start and end lowercase. You can never reuse those, right? Um, so if the node is not in the path, then obviously we can use it because we've never visited it. If the node is uppercase, then of course, yes, we can we can still reuse it, right? Because it's uh, upper. Then allow recursion, and we want to know how many paths, right? So actually, um, we're returning paths here. I guess that's fine. I was thinking about making self dot paths. Um, but I think it's fine to just return return all paths. Okay. So uh, let's go down here. Cave graph. Cave graph. Uh, parsed input paths equals cave graph dot find all paths. All right, let's see how this goes. Uh oh, okay. Uh oh, well, the part one result is going to be length of paths, right? So uh, let's see what happens. So this is we're going to do input uh, the test input. Test input one, the answer was 10 paths. Okay. Oh, we forgot to do something important, which is to put the start and the end. Right. 
find a path from start to end. Yeah, okay. Okay, let's see what we got. Sure enough, there's 10 paths. <laughs> All right, let's just move on uh, to input test input two. We should see 19 paths. Let's remove our breakpoint. So we're going to see 19, 19. And then uh, the larger example, test input three, has 226. We got 226. I think we're done with part one. Uh, let's give credit to the place we copy pasted from. The Python, the official Python documentation that we copied from. Uh, okay. Thanks to that URL. Okay. Uh, cool. Input.txt, our answer for part one is 3856. 3856. That's the right answer. You knew it was the right answer. All right, part two. It's going to be dirty, I know. I guarantee it's going to be dirty in part two. Let's check it. You realize you might have time to visit a single small cave twice. Ah, oh, that's dirty. Big caves can be visited any number of times. A single small cave can be visited at most twice, and the remaining small caves can be visited at most once. However, the cave's name start and end can only be visited exactly once each. Once you leave the start cave, you may not return to it. And once you reach the end cave, the path must end immediately. Oof. The 36 possible paths through the first example above are much larger. The slightly larger example above has 103, and the even larger has 3509. <laughs> How many paths through your input are there with this slight rule change? So for this slight rule change, We just have to figure out a way um, part two paths. Okay. Um, we just have to change our conditional here. This if. We just have to make this if a lot fancier. Right? So not only do we have to say, um, we don't want to say if node not in path. We want to be like, hey, um, let's make a can visit. That's what we got to make. Can visit. Right? And can visit is going to take in a node and a path and be like, all right, look. We got this new node we want to visit, and we um, we know the nodes we visited already. Are we allowed to visit this new node? Return true or false? And then down here, we can simply say if self dot can visit, right? Uh, node path, right? Given the path we've already taken. And this node we want to visit, can we visit it? Okay. So um, the first rule is uh, if uh, if node right is equal to actually start. Well, hold on. If the node is upper. Return true. Of course you can visit an uppercase node. You always can visit an uppercase node. 
if the node is equal to start and uh, the node is not in the path and the node is in the path, return false. You may not visit. Actually, we can do this. If the node is equal to the start, return node not in path. There we go. So if it's the start node, return true if it's not in the path. But if it's in the path, this should return false. Okay. If uh, the node is the end, I guess it's the same thing as start, right? You can't visit end more than once. Um, exactly once each. So we can actually just say if node is in, start end. You can only visit it if you have not visited it already. OK, so now for the lowercase nodes. So otherwise. We can actually do L, L if here. So else, right? This is going to be lowercase nodes. Um, so is there already a lowercase node that appears in the path two times? So we need to scan the path and count it. Right, we can use the collections counter that we learned about earlier. Collections, collections dot counter. So let's say we're counter, we're counting like a, a A, a B, a C, and a, another A. Right? Oh, is it is it this one? You gotta have to look it up. There it is. All right, so we can see here collections counter, and we can see that. Um, We've already visited a lowercase node twice. Then we may um, right. Then that means we can only visit this. So I guess if a lowercase node has is not in, here we go. L uh, if the node is not in the path, then of course we can return. We can go there. Right, we we've never visited this lowercase node even once before, so of course we can go to it. But now it's okay. Else, right? So here is the situation where we're visiting a node. It's not uppercase. It's not start or end, and we visited it before. So then we have to return. Has there ever been in the path, right? Has the path been used up, right? So we're going to say uh, path, you know, has double lower visit, right? So what we can do here is we can filter the path, right? Because the path is just a list. So lower lowers in path is equal. Oh, let's go. OK, the lowers in path equals uh, node for node in path if node is lower. OK, and then we're going to say uh, counter equals collections dot counter lowers in path. And then we can say uh, the max. If the we might have want to invert this, um, so we just want to return self dot path has double lower visit. If the path has a double lower visit, we actually want to do false. 
has no double lower vision. Uh, if it has no double lower visit, we want to return true. So if the max, right? Right? Uh, get out of here. If the maximum count value is equal to two, right, then return false, otherwise return true. Okay. So, here we go. Uh, yeah, we look at the path, we look at only the lowercase nodes in the path. We count count them all. Uh, if another way to do this would have been to, um, you know, make a set of these and just compare. Maybe that is faster than using collections counter. I don't think it's going to matter. But another idea could have been like, okay, lowers in path. Set equals set of lowers in path, like this. And then you can say if the length of the lowers in path set is less than lowers in path. Actually, I think I am going to do that. Um, I'm not going to do that because this is, this is more readable. It makes sense because we have the number two in. But... uh. You know what? I'm going to do it like this. There we go. Uh, yeah, so this this is one idea where you say, okay, we're going to get the unique ones in the path, and we're going to say, hey, well, if the list of unique lowercase letters in the path is smaller than the list of lowers in the path, then that means that one of them was eliminated when we made it unique, which means there was a double, um, right? So that's that's one way of doing it. This way is saying, okay, count the appearances of everything in the whole path. If there is, um, if there's a two, then that means no, you you don't have the double visit available to you. But if there are, um, if there aren't two, right? then yes, the double visit has not been used along this path yet, and thus it is allowed, All right? So if self to can visit, don't need that uh, extra parenthesis there. Okay, so find all part two paths. Okay, so test input one for part two, 36 on the first example. Okay. So. Uh, okay. Stop, start again. 10 again. 10 again. That's not right.
are not modifying the graph in part one, so that's not what's messing up part two. Um, okay, so the node you want to visit, if the node has to be, right, if you can visit that node given the path we've already taken, then find all paths from that node to the end. Right. Okay. Can visit. If the node you're trying to visit is upper, yes, you can visit it. If the node is in, start and end, right? then you can visit it if you haven't visited it already. If the node isn't in the path already, uh, of course you can visit it. Actually, this could be like the first one, right? If node not in path, return true. Uh, the node is in start and end. You can visit it if you didn't visit it already. Else. Return true if it has no double lower visits. The max value is two, then you've used the visit already. Otherwise, return true. Still only returning 10, so we got an issue here. Uh, let's do some debugging, I guess. So, uh,. Put the breakpoint there, set some watches. So we want to take a look at the path. We want to take a look at um, the lowers in the path, make sure that that's working. Take a look at the counter, the max counter dot values. Okay, we want to take a look at all those things. Okay, close that. Oh, something's happening. We're not even calling path has no double lower visit. Um, find all part two paths. Did I change the find all part two paths? Find all paths. What? How could it not even be getting called? Oh, this is why. Because on our recursion, we didn't change the name of the function. That's it. That's the only that's the issue. Okay. We were only we were only we were only applying the rule on on the on the start and that was it. I think we're done now. Oh, no, we got an issue. Mm, what's the issue exactly? Path has no double lower visit. Oh, that's easy to fix. There we go. And we got the 36. Test input two. The answer should be 103. Test input two. 103. Test input three, 3509. 3509, why did part one change? Oh, part one changed because we changed the input. It's correct. And then finally, input.text. Please finish. Come on, all the test inputs finished. 
Oh no. Is it one of those? Oh, okay. One one six six nine two. One one six six nine two. That's the right answer. We're done with day twelve.